everybody. So OpenAI just had their dev day conference today and they released a bunch of interesting features. One of them happens to be assistance. So let's learn more about it. So before we jump into the actual code, and in this video, we will demonstrate uh, how assistants work and what are the nitty gritties around it. But before we do that, it's important to understand a few terminologies and methodologies around it, because it's kind of different from how we conventionally communicate or seek responses from chat GPT models. Uh, so beforehand, how we did it was something like we had an API endpoint and we had a prompt and we would just throw the prompt towards the API endpoint and fetch the response. But assistants are a bit different. So as the name states, assistants can call OpenAI models with specific instruction to tune their personality and capabilities. So this here is kind of an interesting point. And second one being assistants can access multiple tools in parallel. Uh, these can be both OpenAI hosted tools like code interpreters and knowledge retrievals or tools you build like third party functions. So cool stuff. So before we move forward, it's crucial to understand, you know, some of the moving parts of the story around assistance. So you have to build assistant separately and then there are moving parts which are like intertwined with the assistance, which happens to be threads, messages, and run objects. So thread is like a conversation session. So it's like when you actually go to ChatGPT's web interface and you start a conversation. So eventually that conversation is saved. Uh, on the leftmost side of the pane. So that you can call a thread. It's like a collection of messages. It's like a container for all the messages from the user and the assistant. And well, uh, it also boils down a very important question that why assistants were required at the first place. So, you know, you, you could have conversation with the chat GPT models, but they lacked memory, they lacked context. With threads, they have that memory and they have that context. So another part of the uh, this whole equation is how you build messages. So you have to build messages as an object and they again happen to be, uh, they would exist you know, independently from threads. But you would have to place those messages within a thread since thread encompasses a whole context. So you would have to throw in your messages within that context. And to make sure that whenever you place a new message within a thread, that thread would need to be run or rerun. So whenever you place a message, you would have to run the thread and you need a separate object to do that, which happens to be the run uh, object, which as the statement suggests, is an invocation of assistant or a thread. So down here, we have a few snippets where you can create a file and you can pass on to your assistant. And this snippet shows how you can build an assistant. You can add a name, you can add a description, model, tools. Uh, here it says code interpreter, like we discussed in the beginning, that you can all uh, you can only have three tools: uh, knowledge retrieval, code interpreter, or third-party functions. And you have a limit to the files as well. So this here explains it that you can have a maximum of twenty files per assistant, and all of them have to be like uh, five and two MB each. So what I really want to show you here is this diagram, which refers to the run objects lifecycle. So whenever you place a particular message within a thread, it has to go through a series of lifecycle states. Um, it will be queued first, it will be in progress, and later on it can be expired, completed, failed, or canceled. More details are over here if you care to learn more about it. So uh, for, for the gist of it, you just need to remember these five states and you're good. 
Cool. Uh, so let's jump into the code. So uh, I have pretty standard stuff here. Uh, so I've imported my OpenAI package. I have my .env package and I'm fetching my OpenAI API key from my env file. I'm creating a client. Uh, this is a constant that I'll be using within my code. So this is related to, um, you know, uh, the run lifecycle states. So just to check when it completes. So I need the status and here I create a file. So the best thing about assistance is like you can actually give them files and they can actually run through them and they you can ask questions about those files and they can fetch in more details uh, within those files. So that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then I have a series of instructions for my assistant, which happens to be pretty cool. Um, so I go ahead and I actually explain the role of ex of an assistant, which actually really gives you the use case about a uh, use case around assistance. So it says like you're a pharmacist who responds to customers effectively with precise response regarding the drugs or medication they require. Follow the instructions listed below. So the very first point says uh, that you look into the conversation.txt file attached and come up with an appropriate response that suits the best for the customer's question. So I've created a file here, which is uh, which is uh, conversation.txt, and I'm also listing it within my instructions. So this file happens to be a very comprehensive uh, dialogue between a pharmacist and a customer. Uh, it's 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 just like whenever a customer walks into a pharmacy and they would be like, uh, "Here are my prescriptions," or uh, you know, if I'm I'm I have these medical conditions, or uh, I'm going through this particular uh, medical condition or health hazard. So what can I do? What can you prescribe? Stuff like that. So uh, we have quite a lot of uh, you know stuff here. Uh, the thing I'm trying to do from this piece of code is like I'm trying to restrict my assistant just to the uh, conversation.txt. So I'm like, okay, uh, all you have to do is you have to fetch in the details from this particular file. You have to fetch in the details about medication, about, you know, the do's and don'ts, all stuff from this file and nowhere else. So we couldn't do that with conventional GPT models. So adding these restrictions and making sure that these restrictions exists uh, with the memory and the context for the assistant. So yeah, uh, the second point says that if you don't find a match within the file, then refrain from answering the question and just respond, I'm sorry, I don't have a viable prescription for you. The third point says that do not engage in any conversation that isn't from your field of medicine. In case the user is asking questions outside medicine, then excuse yourself from the conversation by responding, I apologize, but I only take drug questions. So uh, this conversation.txt file, it just has a few uh, medical conditions. It doesn't encompass all of the medical conditions. So the second case of instruction is for that particular uh, scenario. And for the third point, it refers to when, you know, your customer or your user can be asking all sorts of stupid questions. So you just need to sort of shrug away from those. And yeah, so that's how you can build an assistant. So you can give it a name, you can give it a description. I copied these two lines of descriptions from the instructions and placed it here. You can specify your model, uh, your tools. In this case, I need a retrieval mode. Since I have a file and I need everything to be retrieved from this file. So that's why this works for me. And I'm providing my file ID over here. Uh, this file is something that I generated over here. Cool. Um, 
So from this point onwards, I'm creating a thread block and I'm printing my thread ID just for the sake of convenience. I'm creating the run block, which happens to have the thread ID, assistant ID, and the instructions. So now you might have a full view of how the run block, uh, the thread blocks actually work. We haven't created the messages yet, but I'm just showing you, you know, like how these four different things actually operate within this piece of code. All right, printing the run ID over here and moving forward towards the main course. So this is an infinite loop. I'm prompting the user uh, with a question like, what's, what's your question? What do you need? And here I'm creating the message. And while I create the message, I'm assigning it the thread ID and I'm assigning it a role. This is a predefined role. Uh, this is not for me. It's just, you know, uh, one of the options that uh, this code snippet had. And I'm putting in the text over here. Now, uh, when I've created a new message, uh, here I'm creating another run block, a new run block, which has a thread ID, assistant ID, instructions, all the same stuff that it basically has. So the idea is that whenever you create a new message and you place it within the thread, that thread needs to be rerun. And that's exactly what we are doing over here. We're creating a new run block, assigning it the thread ID, all the details, uh, fetching in the ID and waiting. Now this run block, it's, it's like uh, an execution and it goes through some lifecycle states that I actually showed you. So uh, this while loop actually helps me to compute that. So what I really need is I need to compute uh, my run blocks uh, status. And uh, when it's evaluated to complete it, then I need to terminate this while loop. Till then I'll fetch, uh, this is a code snippet that actually helps me retrieve my run ID uh, through the thread ID. Uh, and when it does, all I need to check if my status is complete. If it's complete, cool. Exit the loop and here we'll fetch all the messages within the thread, the messages that user has placed and the responses that our assistant has actually put into that thread. And here we just um, sort of print out the messages from the assistant. So let's see this bad boy in action. So here I'm just going to type in Python system.pi and we'll wait. Cool. So here's my thread ID, my run ID, and what's your question? All right. Uh, I have a sore throat. And it generated a new run ID. Uh, the message is in progress and we'll wait and it's completed. Boom. So our assistant says, I'm sorry to hear you have a sword throat. To address the sword throat directly, we have the throat. And let's just copy this and check if it's coming from the conversation file. And it has. So it picked up all these, uh, you know, details from here. So that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's ask another question. Um, I'm feeling sleepless because of the throat. So I didn't mention sore throat here. So the idea is that it'll sort of fetch out the context of the sore throat by itself. So let's see. So new run ID in progress. And cool. It's quite common for the sore throat. So yeah, so there you go. And you might consider using trot spray. Let's check if this exists within our file. And it does. And an aesthetic properties. Whoa. Cool. So yeah, so it's fetching all the stuff from here. Uh, 
let's let's sort of ask about a particular uh, health condition that this conversation.txt doesn't really have so let me think of it okay uh, let's take migraine for example how can I cure migraine all right new run ID in progress and okay uh, now the, our assistant says I'm sorry I don't have a viable prescription for you regarding the treatment of migraine so this is exactly how we instructed our uh, instructor pretty cool stuff so let's confuse it a bit uh, let's try to dodge it uh, who's Iron Man so new run ID and our assistant says I apologize but I only take drug questions cool this is like this is like the coolest functionality uh, let's take another question um, I think I have flu do you have any suggestions and it's in progress and let's see if And it's completed and it actually sent us quite an quite a comprehensive response. I'm sorry to hear you're not feeling well and you suspect you might have the flu. Let's see if we can. All right. Uh, so we have ibuprofen over here. And interestingly, uh, these two tokens, since they appear together quite often, just like here so it's suggesting both of these tokens alongside so yeah I, I think we have covered quite a lot of ground here uh, so this is an interesting feature I, I believe it's a game changer it's really going to help a lot of products and it's really going to help a lot of companies build more scalable ai solutions so uh yeah let me know what you think about it and if you have any questions, please don't forget to post them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.